Davis wins, there's not really, there's not a standout. We just wanted, we wanted to see, we wanted to see how good he is and get a signature win. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. A signature win. You know, so um, we see how it, we see how it plays out. But like I said, you've got Jacobs there. I'm sure there's other super media middleweights there, and I don't want to see it against a, a, a light middle or something coming up. But there's plenty. Listen, if not. There's a lot of what? There's a lot of killers up there in that division. There's a lot of big punching, good fighters in that division. Well, this is, this is how I look at it, right? You know Callum Smith, right? The, the rumour doing the rounds is that Callum Smith's had step aside, yeah? That's the rumour doing the rounds. He's had step aside, though. Right? Now, if that's true, he should be embarrassed. Because they don't want to talk about stuff like that, so does some people. Because Callum Smith were bleating about his title shot for ages, wasn't he? But if he's had step aside on the quiet, that's bad. At least when Billy Joe got it, he said, listen, fuck it, I'm having it. It's free money, it's 100 grand. Yeah. Well, Callum Smith, if he's had it, they didn't want anybody to know. And if Tesco's pulling its strings behind the scenes, they'll have had it. Now, I'll ask you another question now. We'll move on from Krusty Neck. But has... Dillian White had step aside, Bonnie. Um, well, I don't know. I don't think so, Russ, to be honest with you. No? I don't think so, no. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, Would we have got to know about it if he did? Because if Thomas Hauser didn't release that drug test, right, would we have got to know about that then? Would we fuck? No, no, but you can't, I don't think he'd be screaming and shouting the way he has been screaming and shouting if he, if he did have step aside money. Well, like me. I'm, 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 not too, I'm not too sure about that, you know, maybe, maybe it's all hush-hush, you, you don't know. If there's enough money chucked up, chucked up there, then there isn't, but I mean, his mandatory was supposed to be this year, but obviously, with the drug thing going on, which... Still cloudy, but I suppose you, you've done it to death anyway, so. And I don't, I don't, obviously, I don't think he had a lot of grounds, and when they moved the date to this year, or to next year, I don't think he could say a lot, do you know what I mean, to be honest with you, so. Well, we're going to see it. Um, I mean, Eddie Earn jumping on the fact that, well, we didn't want should be awarded the, 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 the title. Because there's problems with Tyson Fury, this farmer story is just absolutely ridiculous, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think, uh, I, well, I'm not going to comment on that actually, because I fucking... No, I do, okay, it's not, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's done, isn't it? it, it listen, as far as I'm, as far, it, it, the, the situation is done, as far as I'm concerned, but, like... I mean, I think a lot more might come out. I mean, once he does get that, once he does have his sh shot, and if he if he fights twice, he's gonna lose. So. Main thing is, Mick Ennis, he got paid out 1.5 million, right? He did. He did. So I'm I'm glad so, about to be that. Fair as well, and listen, he, they settled out of court. So I mean, I think he's uh, obviously he's deserved. Yeah. Obviously, it's an unfortunate situation. Yeah, you're but you okay. should be a fucking MP, you Matt. <laughs> you should yeah, be an MP. Yeah, because I've, I've, yeah, I've, I've seen a few interviews with him where he said, like, you could see it hurt him, do you know what I mean, Russ? And yeah. listen, he's had a lot of fighters and a lot of fighters come and go, in he? So, I mean, obviously, it's not not every, not everything's the fighter's fault, do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a two way street, innit, Russ? I'm sure you can admit that. Mick well. Ennis is the best guy in boxing to sign amateurs. But in my opinion, once he gets them in pros, they progress, yeah, but he doesn't do note for them commercially, and fighters these days they want to maximise their earnings, don't they? You can't blame, you can't blame the rights of Forrest to get out. Eubank, uh, Eubank, Tyson. Do you know what I mean? Because, listen, say what you want, but... He gets, he gets, he, he gets out of there and he gets people talking about him. You know, and he 
done a good he'd done a good job for Cole Fox, you know what I mean? He did, yeah. You know? So that I went to that Fox Groves two fight, you know, and uh that was a it, it was just it was a good card. It was a very good card and it was just a good night, do you know what I mean? A very good night, Rust, you know. Like good seats, good floor seats as well, just behind the VIP. Mm. And uh it was a it's a memorable night, so um yeah, you can't argue with that, but I think he might just be lost in a situation where he, he's not grasped the new age of this social media promoting and getting his fights out more. Because you know, Channel Five, Channel Five Bus is a good platform, isn't it? You know, it's terrestrial TV. I think it's terrestrial TV is the best platform. Well, you've got to look at it like this, Matt. Right, Mick Hennessy, he had a deal with BBC when Dennis had one in in uh, two thousand, early two thousands. He's had a deal with ITV, he's had a deal at Sky, he's had a deal at Channel 5, he's had a deal with, you, with YouTube. Mick Hennessy has done well. He's done well out of boxing, but I just think that maybe Mick Hennessy should have signed a commercial team on or a management team and, and, and got involved with other people, we, like Eddie Earn. Does he, Eddie Earn works with Wasserman Group, doesn't he? Yeah, it's got all sorts of behind-the-scenes people, and it's it's the younger age of us, isn't it? It's the younger age people who are good at the marketing yeah. side of things that can just push push this, push the brand. You get people like Mick Hennessy, don't you? Frank Warren and Dennis, they're like dinosaurs, aren't they? But I think even Frank Warren's just even even Frank Warren has grasped that what's going on lately, the social, yeah. the social side, and it, he's a lot more. The, the way BT pushed their fights, mate, they ram it that like, you know, you know when you come out to a big Sky pay with you, and you get, you watch Sky Sports News and it's getting constantly rammed down your throat, especially a Joshua fight. Yeah. BT are the same now, do you know what I mean? And listen, love it or hate it, 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 it sells the fight, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it maximises the, the, the fight's revenue, do you know what I mean, from the pay per view standard point. And even even a normal Saturday night fight nights, there everyone watching the football on BT on the Saturday nights, they know that the, the fight nights on the next uh, the next uh, not the, the other channel or following on from that showing. So yeah. it's good promotion, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're turning into a bit of an Eddie and fanboy, Matt. You aren't you? You fucking no, frying me out. Honestly, I'm. Listen, honestly, <laughs> I'm not. And uh, I think, uh, listen, we talk a lot on WhatsApp, so. Uh, and you, yeah. you I'm know, only pulling uh, your leg. What's that? I'm only pulling your leg. <laughs> but uh, no, I ain't no sporting icons. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> sporting icons, the man behind the camera, like me today. <laughs> Jesus. And why are you got him on the channel yet, Russ? He's not got no knackers to come on here. I'd tear him apart, wouldn't I? Oh, I don't know. I mean, uh, do, do, do you know what? Since weighing on, yeah, I was just thinking about it. Like, just thinking about stuff to talk about and that. Frank Warren's stable, I mean, uh, apart from the Warren Yard, I mean, they're not massive household names. They're fairly big names, but they're not household names, are they? Yeah, I mean, like, Wes is stable. Like, it's, he's hanging on for dear life, isn't he? It, it's the, it's the massively depleted, isn't it, Russ? He, he needs Tyson Fury to fight Wilder next to get more money out of that game, and then he needs to he needs two fights with Joshua or. Dylan White, two fights with him. He needs two of everything. He, he needs to prolong it because if Tyson Fury, Yard and Dubois cross the street, Frank Warren will hang his gloves up. But then again, he, somebody once said to me that he's, uh, he could survive a nuclear blast. He's the comeback kid, isn't he, Frank? You've got to give him respect. He's got the shoulder roll, he's got the dint in the forehead, he's from a council flat. Frank's a fighter, mate. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Do me a favour. Go get the emails, George. Look, Frank Warren's a fighter. What's Eddie Hearn ever had in his life where he's... Listen, let me tell you a little story. Eddie Hearn sent me a few emails when Frampton left, right? And all I'm going to say is, that was the first guy to leave him, yeah? Carl Frampton. And I saw a side to Eddie Hearn that I thought, do you know what, I feel for him. I don't now, like. But Eddie Hearn has never had any 
hardship in his life, has he? Right? He never had hardship in his life. He's had it on a plate. Now, when he does have hardship, that's when we have to judge him. But whenever he's breaking down crying because somebody died in the ring and then five days later making fights with pay-per-view cheats, nobody's going to take him serious. He's going to be like a politician. He's like the kid who cried wolf, isn't he? He's never had the stuff that ordinary people have gone through in their lives and just talking about day-to-day -day issues, do you know what I mean? You, you know, every, everyone goes through their ups and downs with us, but yeah, but when you've got to weather out storms and you're going for a really tough six-month period in your life where yeah. every day something's going wrong or there's a new problem, do you know what I mean? He's never had to... Let me tell you a little story, right? I spoke with Peter Fury about this yesterday. Listen to this. I've done jail. Peter Fury's done jail. We've done jail on the same circuit. Listen to this. Peter Fury were double cat A, right, for seven years before he went home. Then they told him he had to pay a million quid. Or uh, he'd have to do another, another X amount of year. So they went and grabbed him again and put him in for another two year. So that's nine year double cat A. Now, you've got a light on in your cell all the time, right? It's a little red light. Now, that's, that, that light is on. It comes on at 8 o'clock at night till the next day. Now, you go anywhere in jail, you've got six screws taking you. They call it on the book, right? Now, that's serious jail. Now, I've never been a cat A. I've never been a double cat A. But I've done time in solitary, 333 days, in one hit, right? And that were a padded cell job, right? Because I just, I just used to be... So naughty, you could imagine, you think Billy Joe's naughty. He couldn't live with me when I was younger. But let me tell you this, there's no big in that, no big about going to jail. But humans adapt. Now, this screw once said to me, he come in the cell and sat down and he says to me, are you going to behave? I says, you sound like my old man. Because obviously I put my dad through mill as, as a kid, and my mum. And he said, are you going to behave you or we're going to put some proper pain on you? I says, like what? And... They come in then, three or four of them, and said, look, you're going to have to start behaving down there in this block. I said, why is that? I said, oh, we're going to set about you. And these people weren't messing about, mate. Now, the point I'm trying to make is this. We all go through hardships in life, but this screw said to me, we're going to knock you apart, and we're going to make you do what we want. I said, what do you mean? He said, if we want to put a dog lead on you, Porky, we'll make you fucking, we'll take you up and down landing for your meal. Because you come out your selling block, you walk about five yards for your meal, then you go back. Now, I always used to go get my meal and just launch it at people, and then I'd be starving. There were no on me, ten and a half stone wet through at the time. Point I'm trying to make is, we go through hardships, but humans adapt to it don't they and I kept thinking well I've been in here seven months anyway I mean fucking hell. I was close to cracking up well I probably cracked up actually but just didn't know it but you get through and, and every day another it brings another day and humans adapt and all these people that are belly aching about being in house and all this could you imagine could you imagine being in a solitary confinement sat on floor on on the floor all day and then at eight o'clock they throw a mattress on floor to you there's no bed frame you got you don't sat on the floor all day till eight o'clock at night. Now if I can do just over eleven months of that, three hundred and thirty three days of that, right? What's this? This this what we've got now? It's fuck all, isn't it? But I've got people ringing me up, distraught. Zeddy Earn on IFL distraught. These people have never had hardship. Can you imagine what Peter Fury went through? Fair enough, Peter he had his own cell and everything, and but. Every, everything he did were watched, every phone call taped, every letter photo recorded and every ev every visit with Maureen, they used to video his visits. He had to put up with that for nine years. Seven years in one stint then a year later another two because he didn't pay the fine. But obviously Peter paid the fine in the end. He paid the million quid fine. But otherwise they were just going to keep, keep on at him, weren't they? Do you know what I mean? But the point I'm trying to make is... You, you, people, there's people who do big sentences. My mate Frank from Berry, he got a ten with Peter. In, it, you, you get through it. We get through it. Humans adapt, right? So all this that's going on now, it doesn't really mean anything to me. I've got people roaring on phone to me. People I know, friends and people that I knock about with. They're, they're, they're distraught, and I say to him, listen. How you think people go on in jail? And then I look at certain people in boxing, right? Because there's a lot of blaggers and bluffers in boxing. 
people in the boxing industry they can swagger about in certain cars and that think they're bad men but these people have not been to jail and never done a day in jail in their life and you know what i'm talking about the swaggering about thinking the gangsters right because they're, they're working at boxing and so they might be handling a few fighters or a manager good luck to them i don't see any of these fuckers with criminal records they all get visas to america me and peter fury had to go through homeland security it cost me a fortune peter fucking had two or three guns at it and in end when he went to fight Cunningham with Tyson, they tried to sneak through Canada, didn't they, into Michigan or something, didn't they? They got caught on train, didn't he, Peter? And then they locked him up, didn't they? So he had a good, didn't he? But all these so-called bad men in boxing, right? They're no fucking criminal records. They're not bad men. I'm not saying you've got to go to jail to be a bad man, but the point you're making is people need to stop belly aching. There's always somebody worse off than yourself, so I think prison builds character this is why i'm fearless i am fearless me prison builds character and you know what what will be will be in life won't it do you see where i'm coming from what will be will be people can stick guns in your mouth or say they're gonna do this and do that it don't mean fuck all to me and it don't mean to a lot of people no no to a lot of people that i know but this boxing industry at the moment you're gonna see some people fall by the wayside Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see people fall by the wayside who can't do it. You've already seen Dave Allen on IFL shoving Bob and Biscuits down his throat. Hey, up, Coogan, yeah, I'm 20 stone, me now. Yeah, yeah, I'm on it, I'm on it. How the fuck are you on it if you're eating Bob and Biscuits at 20 stone? And he's just signed with MTK. What, what, what's all that about? What is all that about? If he had half a brain, he'd just be sat there eating an apple saying I've been training instead of laying in bed, wouldn't he? People don't know they've got it till it's took off them, let me tell you. Do you know when it's took off them? Then they realise, then they're like, fucking hell. I wish I'd have done this, I wish I'd have done that. Coulda, woulda, fucking shoulda. Let me tell you a little story. Clinton Wood said to me a few weeks ago, he said, you know what you do in life, Russ? You, go, you take it to the next level. You know, like these tablets I'm coming off at the moment. I'm obviously struggling. If I can get to tomorrow, that, what is that, day four? If I can get to the day after, day five, another four or five days and I'm done. And I'm really struggling. Clinton Woods, when he fought Crawford Ashley, he was getting smashed to bits. Cheekbone smashed, nose smashed. He was getting flogged. But he kept, every round, he kept getting up off his stool and going again. And the more he kept doing it, more the more Crawford Ashley... His punches weren't as hard. And the only other person that I've heard that from, Carl Froch, when he fought Groves. Groves swarmed him, didn't he, for six rounds, didn't he? Come on. Yeah, beat, beat, beat him up, basically. Yeah, beat but... Him up, uh, yeah, they beat him up, right? Carl admits that now, but... He kept getting off his stool, didn't he, to meet his maker, didn't he? And George Groves, the look on George Groves after the round six... Froch give him a look. Now, you might not be able to catch it on telly, but he says to me, I give Groves a look, right? And when I got off my stool for round seven, Groves clipped him, but there were no there on his punch. And that's when Froch went through gears then. Now, all these fucking gimps from Gimpville Island, right? Let me tell you this, so keep digging Froch out. Carl Froch took punishment in that fight. He didn't know where he fucking were, but he kept getting up. And you know when you you know when you get beat up in life, you get up, don't you? You know a two-year-old kid when he falls down, he gets up, doesn't he? But you know adults, we don't get up, do we? We fucking whine, don't we? He got up, just like Clinton when he was getting flogged. He just kept he just kept going and going and going, and you break the will, and, and you just keep going to another level. And that inside is called a champion. Now I'm not a champion boxer, but. I've had to probably face more than them mentally than physically. If I can get through what I've been through, and Peter Fury could get through what he went through, and other people, my friends who've had double figures, like Frank and John O, my other mate, was doing 23 a year, now he's done a 16 already. If people can, humans are that, if people can get through that, what's a fucking bit of house arrest? Hey, or it could be like John Fury when he got 10 year. And Brock down crying in dock and complaining all the way through it. We can do it that way, can't you? Or you can do it with a smile on your face. You, the, the spirit you've got to... Uh, people don't believe me. Go Google John Fury when he got sentenced. Brock down in dock crying. So that's true. I'm only going on what I'm seeing on your Google. 
Look, point I'm trying to make is humans adapt. Now, you've probably not done no jail. There's no big in going to jail, but a lot of people are going on about this corona thing now. It's house arrest. You know, when I used to be on remand, I used to apply to judge in chambers to try and get a bit of house arrest or whatever they call it, or signing on at cop shop, you know, for your bail. I'd always get knocked back, but if you can, if you can have, if look, we're all in our homes, we've got plenty of food, haven't we? And we're surrounded by friends and family and all that. It's all good, isn't it? But you know all these people that are complaining about this coronavirus? If you've been complaining to me, don't complain, I don't want to fucking know, fuck off. I know I don't suffer fools gladly, Matt, do I? But I just think that it's a blessing. I think people can build relationships with this. Do you? Plus, at the minute, yeah, I'll be telling you, be honest with you, I'm, I'm spending good family time at the minute. So yeah, that's it, mate. You're going to be stronger than ever, you and your family. You're always in your cab, aren't you? Cabbies work long hours, don't they, in London, because they've got big bills, haven't you? You're going to get people, they're going to fucking milk fuck out this mental health situation now. People are going to play it to their advantage and just abuse the system. And, all. and you know what? I, f I think to me sense, you know what? These people, they've never fucking... They've never, they've never done any shovel or any army or any borstal. I've done all, I haven't done army, but I've done detention centre. I've done YP. I've done, I've done adult prisons. Look, that's not big, but... They've never known hardship. And you've got Eddie in there fucking whining like a little bitch. Sat in a big Georgian mansion in Stock, Essex. With Rolls Royce outside. Dolly Bird on arm. Two kids and two dogs. With a big house in its own grounds. With a fucking cricket pitch up back at house. What the fuck is he on him? Complaining with millions in bank. Do me a yeah. fucking favour and fuck up. It's not like he's like any of these small fighters who are just scraping by, is he? Do you know is he? Mean? Yeah, exactly. Listen, mate, let me tell you this. You know all these small old fighters? Look, a lot of them get by because they're criminals, aren't they? But let me tell you this. Who wants to buy anything like that now? Everybody's holding on to the money, aren't they? Exactly. And who wants to pay double price for anything to shove up the conk? They're not going to do, are they? No. Do you know what I mean? They're all holding on to it. So what's going to happen, in my opinion, is this. We're going to have a Great Depression. We had one 90 year ago in America, there's going to be another one and it's coming, let me tell you, so get fucking ready. House prices are going to be slashed, it's going to be a new world order and banks are going to move in on us. I'm telling you, there's going to be, there's going to be rich people and there's going to be poor folks. That's what's going to happen, we're going to have mass looting. It's going to, it's going to be like it were in London, so I'm telling you, it's coming and government are shitting the pants. Yeah, the way it's going, the longer it goes, the worse it's going to get, I agree. From a, yeah, from a right. standpoint. I mean, I mean, when, when, do you, when do you see, um, when, do you, when do you see yourself resuming your shows and that? What's well, we had a show, March 27th, right? We had a show, March 27th, Tommy Frank, uh, we're on it. IBO World Title. Uh, and it got, obviously it got stopped. Obviously, because of this coronavirus, uh, Dennis thinks it could be October. Because Mick Whale, uh, my pal, has had a letter off English amateur boxing, England amateur setup. They said there's no amateur shows, Mick, till October. So that you think you think the small holes will resume then? Yeah, I think it might be. Well, if they're going to put amateur on, well, they'll have to put pro on, won't they? Because if they're putting amateur on, people will be able to watch. But then again, it could be reviewed, couldn't it, in, in a couple of months, and it might be it might be fucking pushed back to not December. But if there's no amateur shows till, till October, there's going to be training at mixed gym. His gym's not open. It's a knock-on effect. Now, you've got Eddie Earn bleating, and they're itching, listen. They're fucking itching to put shows on that are clo behind closed doors. If the football goes ahead, right, Sky, uh, Matchroom will be squealing like pigs. They'll be like, wee, wee, wee. 
you're putting football on behind closed doors why can't we do that with boxing but the difference with boxing is you've got to have a doctor there aren't you and an ethicist and all that aren't you and hospital beds and all the staff are all going to be at hospitals aren't they but you still have to have a hospital there at football matches don't you but yeah. Doctors there, sorry. You've you you got to have an ambulance there, you've got to have medics, just in case, you know, like clash of heads or serious injuries or anything like that. Anything can happen yeah. at a sporting event. So, yeah. I, I, can see the prim, I can see the Premier League resuming maybe May, depending if this, yeah. if this can tie down or not. But, yeah, I think behind closed doors for the, for the bigger promoters yeah. and... Um, I think, yeah, I think they're trying to do a pay-per-view, a pay-per-view style, mate. Uh, what do you think about Joyce Debar? Do you think he still goes in July 11th? Yeah, two seconds, let me just change the battery, mate. 